I think that we could probably have worked a whole week just on variables, but um, we talked a little bit about the extraneous variables. And now let's look just quickly at some examples. Um, there's going to be a worksheet that will be uh, an assignment. Actually, there'll probably be several worksheets over the semester. That's the difference between dependent variables and independent variables. But if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were doing a a test over um, TV violence. As some kind of a study examining if TV violence increases aggression in children, then what would be your independent variable? It would be the TV violence. And the easiest way to figure that out is what are you measuring, which is the children's aggression. So whatever it is that you're measuring is always going to be your dependent variable. Um, another alcohol one because they're quite popular. If you were studying reaction time compared to the amount of alcohol consumed, then once again the alcohol would be your independent variable and the reaction time, which is what you're measuring, would be your dependent variable. If you were doing a study where um, in a restaurant, they were trying to decide if putting a smiley face on the check increased the tips. Um, your independent variable would be what? The smiley face. And the dependent variable, what you're measuring, would be the amount of the tips. And by the way, they did do that uh, study, and they found <clears throat> that it increased tips for female servers, but not for male servers. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting look at that. So once again, we know that the independent variable is the variable that's manipulated by the experimenter. And the dependent variable is that which is studied. And how do we study that? These are some of the scales of measurement that we use. And we're going to talk about them more in the next few slides. Uh, the nominal scale is sometimes called the categorical scale. And this is the lowest level of measurement, so you get the least information there. And nominal means name. So some other examples might be um, hair color, eye color, occupation, uh, research observing monkeys, types of music, introvert or extrovert. So measurements on a nominal scale label and categorize behaviors but they don't make any kind of quantitative distinctions between the behaviors. So in the Bobo doll experiment, if Bandura had categorized children as aggressive passive, then that would have been considered nominal data. Um, The next one we're going to look at is the ordinal scale, and that consists of a set of categories that can be organized into an ordered sequence. So the rank order of college football teams, according to um, somebody like the Associated Press. Um, so measurements on an ordinal scale rank the uh, observations in terms of size or magnitude. So although you know the order of the magnitude, you don't necessarily know the difference in the degree of magnitude. Um, it provides information about greater or less than, but doesn't tell how much greater or less than. So two people could be running a 5K race and finish first and second, 